What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Locked On Badgers Basketball State of the Union. We're also going to touch on today's basketball game. Got the quad pod in for this one. Um, excited to do it. Really appreciate everybody tuning in on Wisconsin, and let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everybody? Locked on Badgers, your host, Ryan Herring's your team every single day. I uh, really do appreciate you tuning in, as always, as we build this community up. Uh, this Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, our new friends over there. Uh, official sports book of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. And let's get the boys on. So we got Rajiv, we got Scott, we got Justin. Uh, we've been calling this the Quad Pod. Uh, I don't know if we came up with that name. Anybody? I think I, think I did, but oh, I could be wrong. Yeah. It, it feels like something Rajiv would come up with. Uh, higher, <laughs> Rajiv is a higher life form than the rest of us. Um, yeah. Let's. So, really quick, we we've wanted to do this quad pod for a while to talk about Greg Guard, State of the Union, what our thoughts are, because the conversation is out there. Fans are having it, and we are always trying to have the conversation that the fans are having. Quite frankly, on the show, the other reason we have to do it is I can't answer questions about Paul or you know Greg Gard getting I don't say Paul Christ uh -oh. Greg Gard uh -oh. getting fired after every <laughs> single basketball game. We can't do that every game. So we need to address that here, talk about it here. Um but we are going to start off with the Ohio State game. It just happened. We're going to do a quick take on that, go around the horn. Um start with Justin. Let's I think we'll just do a quick kind of recap what's your big take out of the Ohio State game. Wisconsin did get a road win for what it's worth. Um Justin, what what, what do you think here? Uh number 1 just wanted to reiterate, let's not, you know, litigate the stature of guard based off of every win or loss, because uh, that's what happens. Like everyone uses it as fuel from both sides and all it does is divide us as a fan base. Look at the big picture. That's all that matters. We got a win. You know, it wasn't a great team. It wasn't a impressive ending to it, but we'll take it. Everything that bounces the record. Hopefully it's something that gets them kind of headed back in the right direction again. But yeah, it was not our not our best game, but we looked really good for three quarters of it. So unfortunately, it would have been nice to close strong. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, <clears throat> we make games closer than they always have to be. A uh, couple <laughs> things in this game I want to just call out. Stephen Crowell, I thought he had a great game. I really love the way he has progressed throughout the season. You know, like it, it, early in the year, I kept thinking, boy, his post play was really bad. He just, but he had some really nice poise in the lane tonight. Guy shot six of 10, 14 points. Obviously, let's give it for Connor CG and another, I mean, just another good performance, shooting 50% from the field. And I think, I think our guys played well tonight. I mean, for most of the game. Obviously, we have once again just late shot clock situations, late game situations where I just don't know what we're doing when one guy is trying to score and no one else is moving. There was a time where Wall was struggling, clearly struggling in the paint. Everyone was standing around five feet behind the three-point line. I'm like, well, let's let's move around. Let's cut to the basket. But a win is a win. We're five and six in conference. We're keep, we are keep. We got to keep moving. We got to get our wins where we can take them, and we'll take any road when we can. A lot of other, other stuff to talk about tonight, obviously, but happy we got the win. Good job, Stephen Crowell. Yeah, um, I kind of agree with both sides here. A win is a win. I saw Monty D say, uh, Ohio State is trash. They absolutely are trash. Um, that's probably the worst Ohio State team I've seen in I, this century. I mean, they're they're terrible. Yeah, but they're definitely down. You know, a win is a win right now when you've lost what six of seven, and on the road, um, it would have felt better to win by twelve or fourteen, and you know, win it comfortably, like it felt like. We might, even though we all knew we wouldn't. <laughs> like we all knew it was going to close down at there at the end. But um, yeah, at the end, I, I I echo what Justin said too. Um, we shouldn't be skewed one way or the other by each win or loss. It is big picture. This shouldn't be validation for either side when we win one game or lose one game. But a win's a win right now. Yeah, like I'm right there with everybody. A, a win is a win. You know, if you get a Big Ten road win and you're a mediocre team, the thing is we all agree we kind of know who we are at this point. We're a yeah. mediocre Big Ten team, right? So you go on the road and you you beat – you're an underdog on the road and you get that win, 
that that's important, right? That's that's a good win in the in the small the the micro sense of the season. Macro is a whole different question. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I would I would really quickly say is when we were up eighteen, uh, I know there was frustration that we let this game slip away. It was the least shocking thing I'd ever seen. Of course, we let it slip away. We have seven-minute offensive drops in every game. What do people expect from this team, right? Like, again, I'm only talking about this game right here, but of course we let a big lead slip away. That's literally who we are offensively. So for me, it's a win and it's a win. This is a validation of we are a mediocre team that is not good enough to put someone away for 40 minutes of basketball. So that's my Ohio State take. I'm glad we won. It, we need every win we're going to get this year. Yeah, by the way, real quickly, it is a problem that we all knew we would give up. Oh, yeah. That's a big mm -hmm. problem. And knowing we're going to have seven-minute offensive droughts is a, another – especially when we play, like, decent to good teams. We, but, yeah. we also – one of the things that, <laughs> that really is getting frustrating is we really had a short bench in this game, and that is going to bite us at some point here with some of these better teams that we start playing because – None of these guys have played more than a couple minutes. We're going to end up needing to steal minutes against a couple of the teams coming up. And these guys haven't, aren't going to be like, they haven't played in four or five games. It's like, now you're going to throw them out on the floor against a good team. Like get these guys some reps when you're up, when you're up 18, get a guy out there, steal a couple minutes and then pull them. If things start to get, you know, whittled down a little bit. And and you're and we've seen that already several times, right? Where it's like, let's throw Hodges into crunch time. He hasn't played in six games, and it's like, wait, what's happening here? You know, mm -hmm. we've seen it. I think that goes into some of the guard stuff we're going to talk about too. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's get into the bigger point of this show. Normally, we do a whole show on Ohio State. I feel like, but uh, we're we're going to do more of a bigger picture, State of the Union. Try to get a lot of your comments in. Talk about some of the bigger picture questions with the program. I'm going to start here. We're going to kick it around the horn. I think this is an important question to start with because it kind of frames the discussion. What are the realistic expectations for Wisconsin basketball? And let us know in the comments as well. Like, what, what are we actually holding coaches to for this program? <clears throat> um, Scott, let's, let's maybe start with you on this one. Okay. Well, I think we should go back eight years and see where Greg Gard took over. Um, well, the year before he took over. Yeah. Right. There was a lot of turmoil when he took over with Bo, but I'm not saying <clears throat> expectation should be a national championship game appearance every year. <clears throat> but when we look at those last eight years, we've got three sweet 16s and two final fours. Um, we didn't miss a tournament and we had a 75 percent winning percentage. <laughs> so unrealistic to you know again make the final four every year but i think it's realistic for us to be a perennial sweet 16 contender which we haven't been in what six years now and i think any coach that takes this program over with the uh, the rich history the cachet now at this point when over the last 20 years only michigan state's really been better in the big 10 than wisconsin I think that's that's realistic. Like we should be having <clears throat> at least top thirty recruiting classes. We can't we can't even get in the top thirty. I mean, that's not even asking that much. You know, we're getting we get excited when we have you know a fortieth ranked recruiting class. We you know we're we're doing cartwheels. So I think realistically, we should be able to shoot for a Sweet Sixteen every season. And that's what I'm going to hold guard to for these next couple of years. For me, the expectations of this program are what I think we have achieved over the last 20 some years. We need to be competing for big 10 championships year in and year out. We need to win big 10 championships, not every year, but we need to win them. And, you know, for me, it's about getting in the tournament every year in college football. You, you have four teams playing for the, for the title. And now you have 12. Here you've got 64, and really all you have to do is get 500 in the Big Ten, and you're going to be in the tournament most most years. That's what I want to do every year. I want to be in the tournament. I want to fight for Big Ten championships. And when we get the right pieces in place, right, when we have the Kaminskys and the Deckers and the Harrises and some of these top-notch guys, we compete for Final Fours. That's what that's what I expect. I expect us to be a team that can compete to get to a Final Four, does win Big Ten championships, does make the tournament every year. 
for me, we just like you spoke, it is effectively what we left Bo Ryan with, which is that is our ceiling. That is what we should aspire to as a program. I'm not saying that that's going to be a year in, year out level of success, but I feel like the ceiling has dropped since then. And my expectation is like effectively what Scott said, we should be shooting for sweet 16. In my opinion, I want a team that looks like a sweet 16 team. Yep. Like we're looking at them in the regular season and we're, we're saying this team is, could cause anyone problems. And I don't think we've had a team like that since Bo Ryan was here, since we've had those guys where we had, you know, a couple of guys on the same team that if they're playing well together, that we're truly causing another team problems. Um, so to me, it's, I, I want to be, I want us to come into the tournament as a dark horse and people looking at us and saying, they're a sneaky four, final four pick. Like they, they are an impressive team. They play good defense. They score well enough. And I think right now from a recruiting standpoint, we haven't like, we've taken a step back from what Bo Ryan was doing, but even Bo Ryan and I, in my opinion, was not recruiting to the level of success that he was experiencing. And we could say that recruiting ratings don't matter in that regard. And, and to an extent, I suppose you could say there's some truth to that based off of what he he got done. But I think we would always say the guards were the problem somewhat in, in Bo Ryan's system other than Devin Harris. He struggled to get hyper-athletic guards other than Trayvon Hughes and, and uh, Devin Harris during his time. And uh, I think – what I would like to see is I would like to see us start recruiting to our place in the, the college basketball hierarchy, which is I want to see us start recruiting to the top 20 level. I don't expect top tens. I don't expect top fives, but I want to see us recruiting to the level that we're finishing seasons at. Yeah. I think my expectations might be a little different from maybe, maybe a little different from Scott and, and Justin. I, I don't expect the exact level of Bo Ryan. I'm not saying you guys said that, but Bo Ryan is a hall of fame coach. Yeah. Very few people do that. I mean, making the tournament every single year, um, if that's the expectation, every program in the country basically fails at that. I mean, Kentucky missed the tournament a couple years ago. I just think I, I think if you make the tournament five out of six years, four, I, like we should definitely make it almost every year at Wisconsin. Um, I do want to point out, Justin, you mentioned uh, being a dark horse team going in March. I think we were that last year until Chucky mm-hmm. and, J- and Davis got, got hurt. Like Davis got dinged up. I I really do. We won the share of the conference. Like people were talking about how scary. What do we do in the conference tournament? Davis was hurt. That's my whole point. Like people were talking about Davis being a scary player in March. Then he got dinged up. I think that team, if healthy, would have made noise in March. That's only my opinion. I could be completely wrong on that. But I think expectations are, you know, every four or five years, you make a good run, elite eight type. um, And just about every year, make the conference. My other expectation that I would have. Um, that I I don't think this team should ever bottom out. This team should never finish near the bottom of the Big Ten. So a high floor and an occasional good run into March, I think that's my expectations for the Badgers. Which is what we have, we have been for a while, and we still are now, right now. No Elite Eights, mm. though. You know, I mean, we haven't oh. been to an Elite <laughs> Eight in Guard's entire tenure, and it's been six years. That's why I'm seeing this this – you know, this regression. This and the Sweet 16s downward. were both his first two years. So With Ryan's players, let's be honest. He hasn't been able to recruit right. to that level. No, that's a good point. Like, that's that's a very salient point. All right, we got to take a very quick break for friends of the show. Coming up, we're going to take some comments. We're going to get into maybe some of Guard's weaknesses. Are they correctable? What is the ceiling for this program? we got a bunch more to talk about. And should he be on the hot seat? We're going to talk about all that and more coming up on Lockdown Badgers. But very quickly... A word from our friends of the show, from Bill, our FanDuel, I'm sorry. Uh, Bill Bar's coming up next. They're my favorite, too. Uh, coming up from FanDuel, our new sport, our new sports book, the number one sports book in America, and just in time for Super Bowl 57. This is the only app you're going to need. Of course, my Niners aren't in that, which is heartbreaking. I would have actually would have won a lot of money on that if the Niners did end up pulling that off. Uh, download FanDuel now so you can bet Super Bowl 57 with a no-sweat first bet you'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. I've talked about it before. What would you do with $3,000? I'm telling you right now, if I if I hit big on that, half of that money is going into the collective and we're buying ourselves a small forward that can dunk. That's what that's what my FanDuel winnings are going towards, y'all. Um, it, it's some of the bets I've made. I've got Colorado over four and a half wins next year. I'm all in on that Dion, that Dion hype train. Also, Wisconsin plus 10,000 to win the Natty. Listen, if... 
put five bucks on it, right? Because if it happens, you're going to be happy you did. FanDuel uh, sports back, Sportsbook app is safe, secure, super easy to use. Best of all, you get paid your winnings instantly. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. When you're done here, go check out uh, Locked On Draft, uh, Locked On NFL Draft. They got senior bowl coverage. Cam Benton is tearing it up down there. Go check them out as well for all the latest coverage there. And then let's get back into the quad pod. We want to waste no time here because we got the boys in town. Um, guys, I want to let's kick it over to kind of our next topic here. Great guards' weaknesses are they correctable? You know, is it a system thing? Can can he can he coach this team to the ceiling that you want, uh, Rashid? Let's start with you on this one. Can he coach this team to the ceiling? Oh, no, because this team is going to have No. So one of my biggest issues with with Greg Gard is the lack of adaptability um, and, and change overall. I mean, we've talked a lot about how late shot clock situations, late game situations, defensive situations. He's still playing the same defense he's been playing for a long time. I want him to evolve. I mean, how many times have we called for a zone on this show? We've talked about just switching things up here and there. So, but are they correctable? Yes, I I, I believe they are. I think that, look, look at what Chris McIntosh has done this year. We, we took, and I'm not comparing these Grey Garden Puckers because I think it's a very different situation, so I know we're going to get into that. But Chris McIntosh basically said to Paul Chris, look, you need to make changes or something's going to happen. And he didn't make the changes. I do think changes need to happen. And I think Chris McIntosh will ask for changes to happen to Grey Guard, but he can change them, especially with the right players. We are, we are all excited about next year's recruiting class, right? We all are excited about Gus. We're all excited about Travis, or at least I really am. And I feel like if he's successful with those players, things are going to be fine. Do I think he can correct the issues that he has? Yes. But, Am I a little worried that he's not going to? Yes. And I and I feel like that's kind of where I'm at with this. But yeah, I mean, the other issue is recruiting. And I, I'll, I'll let someone else talk about recruiting. I'm sure that'll come up. But I just feel like his in-game situations, I just want there to be a little more ingenuity. And I think we lost some of that with guard from Ryan. And I think that he's he needs to take more risks. He needs to take more chances. And we, if we get the right players, there's no reason he can't fix those mistakes, but he has them and they're glaring. Cause when you have seven minute droughts in every game, that's a, that's a coaching issue and things need to change. And you need, he needs to use his talent um, in the right time. We, we've all talked about how Connor just isn't used as much, that kind of stuff. Those in-game situations have to change. Yeah. I mean, for me looking at it strictly, his biggest, most glaring weakness is recruiting. It, it simply is. I think if you give him talent, he will make that talent effective. Now, the issue is, is he's got to prove, and I don't, can he fix that problem? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, I look at it and it's like, this is the one thing that you have, your track record says that recruiting at a high level is a problem for you. Now, the, the way the landscape of college basketball has changed probably less than college football a little bit, because I think a lot of us would say, it's, it's just now above board with a lot of the stuff that's going on that's out there right now. I personally think that we need to do what we can to help him in the way that some of the other programs probably are. I don't know what we're looking at from resources from in terms of guard. I don't want to say it's out there if it's not. But they need to give him the resources to give him the opportunity to recruit. And then if he doesn't get it done, that's on him. Then Then he's proven that he can't do it. And you know that you need to put somebody else in there that can. Because if if this is what we're looking at from a talent standpoint stacked on our team, then this is a problem. Because we this is probably the least talented team we've seen in the last 20 years at Wisconsin. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I see what unappreciative Ryan – uh, just wrote, and we'll get to that. And Corey wrote something about he didn't like the framing of the hot seat question, which I think we're going to talk a lot more about the nuance of that too in a minute. The ceiling for guard, and can he fix these problems? I don't think he can evolve. We've had eight years to evolve, and we're seeing the same stuff. Um, we're really excited about next year's recruiting class. And, and, and I am like when I heard the, uh, the Ryan's interview with Gus, it was awesome. But that is still the number 39 ranked recruiting class. And that's what we're like super pumped about. 
if we just had a coach, <clears throat> a basketball coach who could do what we do in football and just, you know, put up walls around the state, we would be pulling in some serious ballers almost every year. And we have let so many guys go or they go to Marquette simply because it's like a vicious uh, circle. We, because of our style of play isn't attractive. We all heard what Tyler Harrow said. Okay. And I don't blame him, even though I don't like him. Um, you know, you go to other <laughs> programs and they've got more cachet and put players into the pros. And I don't see guard evolving. How many times are we going to be screaming at our TVs to go to a box and one or a zone? And it never happens. It never, ever happens. Um, and you're not going to get the guys that you want and you're going to keep coaching this way, which is minimizing possessions, playing, you know, good defense. But the, the biggest thing is minimizing possessions and playing slow ball because we're playing to our talent level. We're trying to keep that floor at a certain level where our, our floor is here and our ceilings right there. Okay. And because of that, it's not attracting a lot of really high rated recruits. They don't have space. You know, we were talking about it tonight with, with Connor. There's the clamps get put down on you so much as a Wisconsin player. They don't have space. Johnny was the one guy who had some space and was kind of given free reign to do stuff. But beyond that, we've regressed this year. I think the lack of talent's a big reason for it. But no, I don't feel encouraged at all that he's going to evolve. Not at all. Well, can, can I sneak in here, Ryan, before I let you do this? Yeah. The, the one thing I want to say about that is simply this. Um, looking at the Big Ten, is there any reason why we should be recruiting substantially worse than Illinois and Purdue? No. Two teams that don't have any much more historical relevance than we do. Better. And we should be recruiting yeah, better. We've, we've done more in the last 20 years than either one of those teams. Purdue's close to what we've done. Mm -hmm. But right now, they are – recruiting circles around us and you yeah. can argue whether they're actually doing it. Purdue, I think is doing a pretty good job of actually using the talent, but both of them are blowing us out of the water recruiting wise. It's not close. No. Yeah. So I, this is my biggest struggle with guard to be honest. And I don't want to belabor the point, but I, I think he's a control freak. Right. And I think control freaks have a hard time adapting. I think control freaks in basketball tend to run offenses that, that don't get in transition. I think they tend to run defenses that they really know. They, they avoid zones. They avoid pressing because those those situations put their players in situations where the coach can't control them. And it's my biggest concern with guard going forward. I, I think control freaky type coaches are high floor guys generally. And I think this is speaking to what Scott's saying, but they probably can't adapt in the situation like you need to, to to generate a high ceiling. It's my biggest concern with guard, and I don't know if you can fix that. I actually think the recruiting is a secondary concern um, because I, I think that he's shown he can get some dudes in here. Next year's class I love. And, Scott, you speak to the, the um, 39th class in the, in the country. It's not great. I, I'm not being – I'm really not trying to be a homer here. I think that's an under-ranked class. I, I think you have two potential stars in that class, and Blackwell's going to be really good. But I, at the end of the day, if, if guard can't get out of his his stubbornness a little bit, then, yeah, the ceiling is really limited in my opinion, and I think it's going to struggle. Um, and, and I want to kind of really quickly go around and, and pull up some of these comments as well. Jake R. says it's recruiting. That's pretty much it. Um, still a very good coach. It's silly to say otherwise. Does anybody here question if he's a good coach? Because – all, at some point or another, we've all wondered about late game situations. We've wondered about plays out of timeouts. We've wondered about um, adjustments. Now, some of that's talent, obviously, right? It's easier to drop a play when you have Johnny Davis. But where are you guys at on Greg Gard is a good coach, yes or no? And kind of a, a quick around the table here. A good coach, not a great coach, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Good coach has has some issues, but certainly can get the job done at this level. Yeah. Echo what Justin said. Good coach, not a great coach. Great coaches evolve. They're able to, you know, really kind of transform their systems to fit the, the talent that they have, the situational. It's just he doesn't have that ability. And I think what Ryan said nailed it. It's this control freak and in him. And I think it's limiting 
him as a coach and the program overall. Yeah, that's well said. All right, coming up, we have the the PC Paul Chris to Greg Gar comparisons that everyone's talking about. We're going to talk about that next. Uh, really quick, we have to take a very quick break for our friends of the show. These are the ones I alluded to. These are the built bars. Um, if you've listened to the show before, you know I talk about built bars as my hidden health cash. I have them stocked, stacked away. I eat them all the time. They're like candy bars, but they're full of protein, 17 plus grams of protein, um, less than three grams of sugar, 100% real chocolate, not a lot of calories, great flavors. Churro is my absolute favorite. It's like eating candy bars with protein. It's awesome. My kids sneak them. My eight-year-old sneaks them, thinks he's like being sneaky, like getting my candy. And I kind of give him like the side eye, like, hey, man, stop eating that. It's but I know in my head it's like a dad win because he's actually eating something kind of healthy. And they've gone mainstream now. You can go to Walmart, Sam's Club, pick up your four bar or your 13 bar variety box. I don't know how they do it, but they managed to make just the healthiest protein bars on the market. Do it now. Go to, um, go, go to like I said, go to your Walmart, go to your Sam's Club. You can also get them online. Get Built Bar today. Incredible flavors. You're going to thank me later. All right, let's, let's get back into this show here. Bring everybody back on. Rasheed, Scott, Justin. Um, one of the biggest topics that's kind of come out of this, and this is fallout from Chris McIntosh making the the crazy move. I mean, at the moment, it seemed crazy to get rid of Paul Chris, bring in Luke Fickle. Um, is the comparisons to these coaches that have been everywhere, Gray Guard and Paul Chris? I have my thoughts on this. Um, Justin, I don't think we've started with you on one of these. So I'm going to start with you. How apt are those comparisons? Are they? Is there a middle ground there? Take it away. I think – There are some similarities. I think people get a little too, because both guys are kind, they're not the most charismatic guys. Um, They're both dad coaches. Like you look at it, both of them just remind you of like your, your buddy's dad who's coaching your basketball team. (laughs) And, uh, but, but I mean that they're not charismatic. Like Bo Ryan was charismatic. Yep. You know, we look at some of the other coaches that are in college basketball that they're larger than life. They are the face of their program, not the players. You know, that's what Coach K was at Duke. You have, but you look at it and it's like those, that's a big part of where people compare the two of them. I think there are some similarities. I think we'd agree that they're both overly stubborn to a fault at times. Um, I do think that guard has not necessarily had the same level of in-game problems and things like that, that we've seen, that we saw with Chris towards the end, where it was like, head scratching moves and stuff like that. I mean the, the biggest head scratcher that I have with with uh guard has been the the last second shots where it constantly drives me nuts and it's like but that goes all the way back to Bo Ryan from his start time here. So mm-hmm. it's like this is this is a system. Like this is it is what it is. I don't agree with it, but that's you know his fault. Um I, I, you know, there are some similarities, like I said, in terms of stubbornness. And I think that that is the overriding issue here is can, can he evolve enough to figure out a way to get this back to where it was before? And is he capable of it? I think that that's what you need to look at. Like I realized that Bo Ryan was an, a hall of fame coach, but now that you've achieved that, the goal is always going to be, we've proven that we can do it. You need to find a way to get back to it. And if you're not doing it, then you're not, you know, maximizing what you have. Yep. Um, yeah, I agree with everything Justin just said. And I think some of it too, just as a fan, like we watch sports for, and Ryan's even spoken to this for entertainment value. Okay. The football team and the basketball team in particular, <clears throat> and we have as fans have kind of <sighs> held on to this as part of our identity. And I think there's some insecurities here. <laughs> We're boring. Oh, okay. God, yes. The football team became extremely boring to watch. Now they oh, attained yeah. a certain level of success. Still the basketball team is very boring. They weren't that way with Ryan. Ryan had a bunch of charisma and it carried over onto the court. It really did. I also see uh, some parallels, too, with the first few years of Chris coaching tenure and the first couple years of guards. They both had fairly high levels of success. And then there was not, I mean, guards third year, I'm not even going to blame him that much. There was a lot of injuries and stuff that went down that year. Okay, Davison's first year. But um, 
you know, and I just saw a comment. I was super exciting. And I, and I get this. And, and sometimes this is kind of, you know, the comeback for that. But I, I honestly, I feel like there's some of our insecurity as Wisconsin mm-hmm. fans there. Their coach um, stinks. That's their we, problem. We, right. Yeah. He's an ab, he should be in, a, in an insane asylum. Um, <laughs> but like, there's just this slight downwards trajectory, just like with the football team. A lot of people wanted uh, Chris to be able to finish that season. I'm not advocating for guard, by the way, to be fired in the middle of the season. And it won't happen. Um, but at some point, where do you, because Brian talked about, you know, we, we can't bottom out. Okay. Or do you wait for this program under guard to bottom out? McIntosh won't do that. Or do you see the trend, the big picture that Justin spoke about earlier? And do you say the big picture this slight downwards trajectory, this this regression that we've seen, do we stand for that? Or do we say with this rich history, with the cachet we have as a program, we can go out and get someone else who can take us to the level we see? I uh, Look, I understand that the people are talking about the Paul Christ thing. I think there are two very different wings here. Paul Christ... We saw we saw at the end of last year after the Minnesota game, there were a lot of people calling for for his head then. I think that we we definitely saw that regression. I don't necessarily see a mat like a big regression with the basketball program. I'm not saying I, I could be wrong. I'm not saying it's not possible, but this is just a down year. And I feel like we are we're kind of we got this mode now with after we've seen what what, what happened with football, we're like, oh, we we we're now that's that's become like the sexy thing. We want that, right? And I I we're okay. I I feel like, look, there was a big downward recruiting. There's a big downward recruiting with Paul Christ, uh, with Paul Christ. We saw that, especially with, I mean, look at, look at who we lost with Kekahuna and, and, and Howard. And now we just got him back next year. We've, we are so pumped about next year's recruiting class. So is, is he really that bad? I'm not saying it's like everything's rosy and great and we should just be happy about it. But I, I don't think Paul Christ and the gray guard comparisons are realistic. I, I truly believe that also, the, the, the expectations about the sport are different. I mean, in, in this sport, it's about making the tournament, right? And, and anyone can play for the Big Ten Championship or for the, for the National Championship if you get in. Well, he's doing that. He's done that all except 2018. So, and he's won two of the last three Big Ten Championships. No, I don't think it's like Paul Christ. I think that I can see the stubbornness. I can see the lack of adaptability, and I get that. But I just don't don't feel like you can put those two guys on the same level and say, okay, well, you know, like the, the, it's a, it's like the same coach. I, I don't see that. I think the basketball program is much better off than a football program was under Paul Christ. I realize that's not a popular opinion and even not with, with these guys, but that's just kind of where I'm, where I'm at with it. Can, no, can I, I interject oh, quickly? Yeah, because I think that there's a lot of nuance here and <clears throat> I'm not saying that there's, and, and I, I tried to make this pretty clear that there's this huge downward trajectory. It's not. But if you want to look at the analytics, it's right there in front of us. Um, even when we were co-Big Ten champs in the COVID year, we went 21 and 10. Okay. Um, it'd be a lot different to win a Big Ten championship in football than, than basketball. Uh-huh. We can all acknowledge that and agree. Um, the record his record is getting slightly worse. And, and, and again, we are not entertaining in general last year was by, but we still regressed by the end of the season. We can chalk it up to injury or whatever we want, but we were not fun to watch by the end of the season. And that was the most fun we had been to watch in at least since Koenig was there. We had five years in between when with hat ball, we again, we attained a certain level of success, but it was terrible to watch that team. Okay, our, I like our, numbers. I mean, our point we, differential has has steadily gotten smaller and smaller, which is a very concerning trend. Well, I I would say this though. So, Rajiv, I'm actually Tuesdays we're calling believe with Rajiv. By the way, that's that's the that's where we're <laughs> going with this, and and not that today's obviously too, but like believe with Rajiv and Rajiv, I'm right there with you on this, by the way, Scott, your hat game is, is great. I love that Milwaukee hat, by the way, <laughs> um, Rajiv, actually. So I agree with you. I, I think this is just a down year and those happen. Um, I, I really, 
if we're talking specifically the, the Chris guard comparisons, I thought what we saw at the end of the Chris tenure was a guy who had essentially given up without giving up. Like his in-game decisions were abysmal. Everyone remembers the Minnesota game, right? Where he couldn't figure out if he should punt or go for it. So we did neither had a false start, used the timeout and then went for it. Everybody remembers this, right? You remember not going for two against army. You remember accepting a penalty against Ohio state to give them all the, the no, declining the penalty to give them all the 40. I mean, at the end of it, he was hiring L. Johnson to coach running backs. Like, it, it had fallen apart for Paul Crest. We got blasted at home by Illinois. We, we should have been on the field against Ohio State. So the comparisons to me with guard and Crest, I, I can see on the fringe because their systems are kind of boring. That makes sense because um, they're not dynamic recruiters. It makes sense because they are stubborn, yes, but – I don't think it's an app comparison. So, Rajiv, I'm right there with you. I, I don't think basketball is in the death throes that football was in, um, if, if that's the question we're asking. But I don't know if that it like, again, I think there's a lot of nuance, and I don't think we're in the death throes, but I think that's why McIntosh also came in with the football team before they bottomed out, before Chris took them another season to like four and eight, okay, because he could see that coming. All right. So Scott, Scott, do you think we're heading that way? I mean, like what, what are what if, if, it, if everything kind of stays the way that is, yeah. Like how do you, how do you see us going now? Because I, I'm actually curious as to what, cause I, I hear what you're saying about like, you know, like the nuance, but like, where do you see this actually progressing? I don't see much of a progression. I kind of see us in this same area for a while. Um, I think that we'll start missing more tournaments I don't see us like turning into Minnesota and, you know, losing multiple games by 28 points in conference, but because that the, the system has a pretty high floor. Right. But I see us every couple, two, three years now winning maybe 15, 16 games, not winning, a t not going to the tournament. And um, again, not being very entertaining, not having those years where we go to the elite eight. I, I don't think that's, in realistic at all even with yalden and winter again excited about those guys but we're gonna if yalden averages nine and a half points next year that'll be big for him as a true freshman like in this system so sure. no i don't see us bottoming out but this is why the decision i think we shouldn't be in this position we were in a national championship game in 2014 we were in the final four the year before that like we shouldn't be having these conversations and Chris, no, again, it's so easy to get them mixed up. Guard, okay. Guard uh, should not be um, allotted the same understanding uh, and for down years as Tom Izzo, okay, as Jay Wright. He didn't win national championships. He hasn't been to 10 final fours mm -hmm. like That's Tom fair. Izzo. He hasn't won, you know, Bill Self, could win three games next year, and it's good because he's won national championships. Yeah. Really quick, just before you jump in, I just want to address this comment because I've seen this. This uh, Melvin Melvin came in, and again, thank you everybody for in, in the comments said these same guys didn't want Chris fired. I was much more critical of Paul Chris. I just yeah. want to be super clear. I didn't think he would get fired because it was right. be such an on Wisconsin move. Um, but I don't want to necessarily get painted into this narrative that. I didn't want Chris fired, and now I'm super happy with Fickle, and I didn't oh. want Guard fired, but I'd be like, I was done with Chris. Yeah, I just want to be super clear on this. Yes, um, we one hundred percent. Go, go ahead, Justin. Sorry, so, where, where I'm, where I am with this is, I think people need to take a objective view of of what next year may be, um, because I, my way of looking at it is, I take a look at it and say, what what can we conceivably say that that team is going to be on paper. We don't know that Wall's coming back, and I feel like a lot of people just automatically pencil him in. We have no idea if he's gonna plans on coming back. If if we lose Wall, I think you're probably making up, if you're lucky, in the aggregate. Basically, you know, you're looking at Gus and Winter, hopefully eating up the stats that you lost with Wall. I I just think that what we're looking at is in order for was for us to take a step forward next year. We need Wall probably back, and we probably need to make hit on the portal a little bit, uh -huh. which is not a foregone conclusion. Like this team could be this roughly the same team that we have this year, next yeah. year, and not a substantial step forward. My my biggest concern for me personally, 
is I don't love that we're not attacking the point guard per position in, in recruiting yep. because we're, we're two years into Chucky now. We don't have anyone that we look at and we're like, like this is the class right now heading into 24 where we have to get our, our heir apparent at the point guard position. And I don't think that that's what, currently what we're looking at for uh, Freitag if, he, if they even lock him down. But we have nobody else on the board right now that we're looking at in terms of a point guard. And that scares me because McGee is of the same class as Chucky. So you're not getting a guy. It's not like he's going to be here after they have to find somebody to fill in there. And you can have all this talent that we bring in, in that next couple of class and nobody to lead it. Well, two points on that. If we're talking next year's team, you have Hepburn for two more years. I don't, yeah. I don't think point guards as dire because point guards can play right away. If you get a good one, Hepburn did a lot of them do. Like you don't point guards don't need two or three years. It depends season. on what your expectations of the team are. No, no I, I think if you get a good point guard, he honestly usually typically plays some role right away. Um, I think next year's team actually has the ability to be pretty good if if Wall comes back because I think I think you're going to get even even if it's not a big jump, Hepburn's going to get better with another year of playing. You know, um, Stephen Crowell, look at the jump Crowell made this year putting on weight. He's going to be better. Um, Connor, Connor could take a big jump next year from a freshman to a sophomore year. And then if you add in Gus, Gus is going to play like Gus is going to play right away. Um, uh, next year's team is going to be better. I think. And if you get wall back and it like Justin, I think your point is dead on about the portal. If you get wall back and you hit on someone in the portal, which guard has to do, by the way, that's, that's it. Uh, you want to talk about another thing that kind of frustrates me with guard. This is two years in a row with bad depth. That's, that's a problem. That's mm-hmm. a red flag, right? We, we need to be going eight or nine back. deep. Yeah, we had bad depth last year's team, right? And he didn't address that this offseason. So this offseason, you better you darn well better address that depth and get in two or three people can who can play. Like that's a big problem. But I think if he does that, next year's team could be really good. I have a lot of faith in Yaldon. I think Connor's gonna make a jump. Hepburn's gonna be here. I don't know. I I, I really feel like we could be looking back next year at this team and say, <laughs> mm, I get it. That was just a bit of a, a trough. I agree, Ryan. I really do think that 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 there's a lot of um, a lot of still a lot of good potential still here. I, I I just I feel like yeah. I I I think you said it really well. We can look back on this next year and be like yeah. You know, I mean things are okay. We we've, we've got good players, and when he has good players, he's going to be successful. I just wore this to remind everyone. Last year we did win the Big Ten. Let me just <laughs> you know let's let's not forget that. I understand that we had Johnny Davis, but. You know, I mean, I understand that when 2015 we went to the national championship, we also look at Kaminsky's development. Same, I think we just had a comment about that. Kaminsky's development was there. Well, Johnny Davis' development was there. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna strike, you're gonna get lightning in a bottle sometimes, and you got to have the players on the team. And I think if we get those, there's no reason to think that guard cannot, in my opinion at least, there's no reason to think that guard cannot take us to a final four. I firmly believe he can. But by the way, before um, Justin or, or or Scott kicks in on this, we had kind of back to back comments. The first one for, was from Gold Digger. By the way, thank you, Gold Digger, for, for tuning in. I've talked to you offline as well. You're an awesome fan of the show. He said, Scott makes the best points. All The rest of you are unrealistic. And then the next comment was like, I agree with Ryan. Scott needs to settle down. <laughs> so it just it shows the the differences of opinion, you know, like in the in the Badger fan base, which I think is really cool. Uh, it, it's definitely a topic that people are on a lot of sides on. And Murph says Scott does not need to relax. Like Scott. So, <laughs> Scott, Murph, everybody loves Scott. Love, Murph love is awesome Scott. too, by the way. Murph is is on a lot of our comments, and he always brings good good points up. So, um, maybe we'll, let's get into the next gear of this, which was the the crux of the show. Really, is he on the hot seat? Slash, should he be on the hot seat? And whoever wants to take that one first, I'll dive on it. Oh, um, Justin, Justin will take it. I, honestly. I think the seat's getting warm. I don't think it's hot yet. Um, I, I think a lot will depend on the way this season ends and probably on the way next season, st- how, the off season, how he handles that and the way the next season starts. If we end up falling off a cliff the rest of the season, you know, we finish under 500 or right around 500. He doesn't hit the portal. We go into next season and we are hanging around 500. I could very easily see them saying, all right, this is just not cutting it. Yeah. Agreed 100%. Um, I I don't think that they're going to be reactionary at all with this. I think that his successes will be taken into account. Um, And I agree it's not 
it's not totally analogous with the uh, Chris situation. I do think, however, there are a lot of parallels. And when you look at the record and, you know, uh, recruiting and stuff like that, uh, the stubbornness, I think there's actually quite a few parallels there. Um, I think that he gets the rest of this year. And depending on what happens this year, um, if we win three more games and we do very little in the portal, as Justin just alluded to, I think he goes into next season with a warm seat. And if he doesn't come through on these in-state recruits for 24 and we go out next season and have a similar year to this one, it's over. I think it's over. I think he's got to come through with these in-state 24 guys. And we should hold him to account for that too. Like he's got to come through for some, this was a big difference because Ryan did, he was coming through, man, with some, he, he pulled through with Decker, with Koenig, you know? A lot of these kids grew up Badger fans. And at some point you need to start locking those kids down. Like you can't have an easier road than that. That's one of the biggest differences between football and that. And I realize it's a different situation, but you have to take advantage of the fact that you have an in with these kids. That's why Decker was here. Decker grew up wanting to be a Badger. That's what got him in the door and why we got a five-star. You have to find a way to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So I will say that I don't think he should be on the hot seat at all. Um, I I don't know if he is or not because, frankly, Chris McIntosh surprised us this year. So I really don't know what Chris (laughs) McIntosh feels about this because Chris McIntosh could be watching Locked on Badgers, which we know he does. And he's probably thinking, you know, <laughs> geez, these guys are nuts. I'm going to fire him tomorrow. But look, right. <laughs> I don't think he should be on the hot seat because I feel like football and basketball are very different in this regard. I said it before and I'll say it again. I feel like what we need is a guy that's going to win us Big Ten championships from time to time and get us into the tournament every year. I don't want to be the school like Minnesota, like other teams that just that, that, that tank when they lose their coach. We have it. As Badger fans, we have it pretty good when it comes to our basketball program. We've been to every tournament in the last 22 years except 2018. And I just feel like we're not really to the point where that we where we need to make a change because we're still doing that. We just have a bad team this year. Now, Who's that being that, said, that, and, well, I mean, I understand that, but we also right. we also lost Johnny Davis early when we were, we weren't really expecting him to. So, I mean, I there's there's part of that too. You have to take into account that. I understand your point, Scott. I hear you on the fact that that re, that you know recruiting has been an issue, and that's his fault. But next year, he has a great class coming in, and we could all love him. So, we don't awesome. really know. I guess what I'm saying is like, I just I just feel like everyone we like like he. We are. We get into the tournament every year. We won the Big Ten championship two out of the last three years. I understand that they weren't the best teams, but we still won the conference two out of the last three years. That there has to be something that's said for that. It's not the same as the football program because we are going to compete in the tournament every year, and we are going to do it. Now, that being said, if we end up to start, if we start losing, you know, over half of our Big Ten games every year for the next couple of years, then yeah, of course, like he he doesn't belong there. But as long as we are staying in the status quo of we are competing for Big Ten championships, not this year, but we are still doing it because we did it last year. We're getting to the tournament. We're potentially looking at Sweet 16s. And eventually, not eventually, but when we hit on good recruits, like we potentially have next year, we can make final four runs with those guys. I don't think he should be on the hot seat. I don't know if he is because who knows about Chris McIntosh, but if he starts failing miserably, then fine, get rid of him. I'm, I, I'm not saying he he's earned 10 more years. I just feel like he's okay right now because we're just having a down year. He has done what, what we wanted him to do. And the program is in a fine position. That's where I'm going to lay my hat. Down. <laughs> I, I want to say one thing about this and this, it really isn't the Paul Chris situation or Paul Chris or guard situation. You can't run your program scared. And what I'm saying with that simply is this. You can't assume that whatever change you make is going to be a failure. You have to trust the people that you hired are going to make good hires and that you're going to get somebody in there that is a qualified person. If you run it the other way and you play scared, it's just a slow descent into into death for a program. Like it's slower that way, but why why have it fall off or go downhill 
when you may be able to hire somebody that's really qualified and good that ends up taking you to new heights. And if it starts going downhill, that's fine. I just don't think we're really going downhill right now. I don't think we're in a downhill situation. That's that's kind of where I think we differ on that. I, I don't disagree with you, Justin. I think that that you know when we need to make a change, we need to make yeah. a change, and you can't play scared. I get that. Yeah. But but it, but we are we're still in a situation where we're making the tournament every year. We're still in a situation where we're winning Big Ten championships. What I mean, why is that all of a sudden so bad? Like, why is it all of a well, sudden bad when we're five and six in conference? I get we're bad this year, but we're still doing what we want our coaches to do, what all of our expectations are earlier. We, we, we haven't not achieved well, any of that stuff. And this year I mean, is not wrapped up yet either. To be very clear, like, it's not impossible this team makes the, the, the tournament, right? right? And you just chalk it up as – a bad oh, we're stop. making the tournament. We're making the tournament. Of course, I love yeah. Rajiv, man. Rajiv's amazing. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna respectfully disagree on that. <laughs> Even if you don't, let me bring up another point that I think matters. Um, Chris McIntosh, what is Chris McIntosh at his core? Is he a basketball guy or is he a football guy? Well, he's a football guy. That he's doesn't mean that he guy. doesn't know personnel. Well, no, 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 just listen to what I'm saying though. Like he's a football guy, right? Mm -hmm. Football is the cash cow, football is king, no matter how much we love basketball we all do wisconsin is also a basketball school it's also a volleyball school and a, a women's hockey school football is king right he saw the cash cow going downhill i don't think he's going to make as quick of a decision with basketball i really don't even if even if basketball has a couple more years where it doesn't live up with the expectations look how long tony granado's lasted in hockey i'm just saying like I think the leash is shorter for football. And, and that's true across the board, by the way, in, in all of college sports, the leash is shorter for football. So I don't want to dive it, into revenues on this real quick to just to point this out. We made about four and a half million dollars or something like that, which you know how companies work. We always are trying to show as little profit as possible. Um, <laughs> yeah. They basketball was an $11 million maker last year. So basketball is, does bring in money for the school mm -hmm. and a it's lot still of not football. No, it's not. But, but my point is, is that when you, when you're only in the black by four and 11 of that came from basketball, like it's, it's not something that you can just throw out the window in terms of the greater, larger picture of your overall sports programs. And let, yeah. let, let me also add real quickly, like, again, there's nuance because Granado has had a lot of pros and had some really good recruiting classes. He's probably toast after this year too mm -hmm. with the clauses yeah, they is. put into his contract. Please God. <laughs> but again, <laughs> there are reasons why he is still here, and that's because he's pulled in some really good recruiting classes and some excellent pros in the NHL right now. Um, I I just I do see exactly what 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 Justin said in that. Okay. Yeah, we're fine right now, but I don't think that we should be settling for fine. And I don't think I completely agree with Justin. You should ever play your hand in fear. And I don't think McIntosh is going to. And I don't think he's going to be reactionary. I don't think anybody's getting fired this year unless there's a total collapse. And that shouldn't yeah. happen. OK, because as Rajiv said, we just won the conference last year. We would need to lose out and be non-competitive. The rest right. of the year, like I'm no, talking no. 20 point losses every game for for him to be like, all right, this is something's wrong. The beginning right. of Chris football year, essentially. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. However, I think the 2024 recruits and next season, if we don't cash in on those guys and we have another mediocre season next year, which I'm not just going to assume Chucky's going to be great next year. I think he's kind of the guy who he's going to be at this point, to be quite honest with you. I think this is what we're going to have. Um, so I don't think the basketball team is going to be like, you know, win five or six more games than wherever they end up at this year. Um, I think it all comes down to next year. I think that he's going to want him to make not only the tournament, but have more success. Again, we've not made the Sweet 16 in six years. We made it every other year under Ryan and he set the table and now we've fallen off to the point where even if Ryan was still head coach 23 years in, I'd be like, yo, it's probably time to retire because you've kind of lost it, man. Like we're slowly regressing. You haven't made a sweet 16 in six years. 
you haven't made that final four. It's been almost 10 years now. We appreciate it. You know, we're going to send you off with the, with the gold watch. It's going to be a big party, but it's probably time to, uh, to wrap it up here. And guard wasn't that guy. Guard doesn't have that cachet. He didn't make those final fours. Let's let's wrap it up here because uh, we're about almost an hour. This is going to be pushing towards one of the longest lockdowns ever. But we knew this would go along with all of us on talking about great. We've got guard. a lot of people watching too, so thank you everyone for watching. Yeah, yeah man, all y'all, Joe, Brian, Bo, Bo Dragon, <laughs> man, you are Chris. Mackinac, probably. He's he's. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, he's not trolling, man. He's 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 a good dude too. Uh, let's end up with this question: In five years, is Greg Gard the coach of this team? Rajiv, let's start with you. I say yes, he is. And I say that he will have gone to some Sweet 16s in that time. Um, I don't necessarily think we're going to go to a Final Four in that time. Well, hopefully, well, well, you never know. With the Yaldin and Winter and those guys, maybe. But yeah, I I, I do. I think he's still the coach in five years. Uh, Justin? In all honesty, a lot of it hinges on this the remainder of this season for me, so it's hard for me to say for sure. I'm going to say... No, because I actually think we're going to end poorly this season, and I, I'm, I'm concerned it's going to affect the 24 class. Is is my fear? If we end up losing out on Freitag and Khan to two teams that they look at and they're like, hey, these these other teams are looking at national titles, and Wisconsin's looking at just trying to get good again, then it scares me that those guys, because they they effectively are going to be able to choose wherever they want to go. So to me, it's I'm a little worried about potentially the 24 class imploding and us not having any plan B's that are offered right now that we're really in on. Yeah. yeah. I, I agree. And I think that's what everything hinges on. I, I, I guess I hope that he's here because that means we would we, yeah, have experienced well. a lot of success. Okay. And that we, cause I don't think Macintosh is going to just allow this to be, yeah, you know, we, we go 22 and 11 every year and we lose in the first or second round. I don't see him allowing that for more than another year or so. Okay. I think we don't get our 24 in-state recruits. I think this season ends poorly. I think next season goes a lot I don't think it goes very well. And I think that he's gone after next season. I don't think we're going to get the recruits. And I think he's going to be gone after next season. Wow. No, listen, I, I agree with both of you, by the way. If that's what happens, like this season goes poorly and we miss on the 24s, yeah, I think you close the book at that point. But I don't think that's what's going to happen. I think this season's right. going to be inconsistent the rest of the way. I think he's going to hit on some of those 24s. I think next year's team is going to be better. Mm -hmm. I think he is going to be here in five years. I, I would also say I think there's sometimes his value in things breaking and forcing a coach to reevaluate what he's doing a little bit. Like this, this might be a kick in the butt that guard needs a little bit as well to adjust what he's doing. Um, I would love I, to see it. And I don't, I, think so, yeah. I don't think he's completely against it because we did see a different offense with with Davis, right? We did yeah. see him play more ISO. We yeah. did see it move faster. Like he's not a complete. Um, I don't I'll control freak in the sense that he won't adjust if he has a great talent. So I'm going to say, yes, I'm going to agree with Rajiv. Um, I think this bad year might be better than like just a, a decent year where he, he can kind of like, Justin, you've mentioned this before where you don't want to just coast along and well, it was good enough. Let's tweak it. This might be a year where he needs to look in the mirror and say, okay, that didn't work. I need to fix something yeah. um, and augment what I do well by adjusting what I don't do well. I really like next year's class. I think he's going to be here in five years. Can I ask if you guys am I the only one that thinks that we're gonna make the tournament this year? I think I'm guessing I am, but I think you I, are. What? Yeah, I, 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 def don't. I definitely don't. Wow. Yeah, I, mean, I, don't I, I think there's a there's a chance that they finish around 500. I think they probably will be around 500 in conference because if you do that, you're gonna make the tournament. Yeah, Five, you know, 500 in 500 in general. Yeah. 500 in general. Wow. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, then you're not. <laughs> Then, yeah, then, <laughs> that, that removes all doubt at that point. I yeah. I don't think so, Rajiv. I think we just miss. Unless listen, unless you get some weird run in the tournament, right, where you snatch off three wins in weird ways. I don't know. I I don't see it. I would like to say that it would also it would require us not to have any injuries because we know that if we have one injury, this team's losing games. But remember <laughs> that the games that we did lose, we had injuries. So, I mean, yes, True. Purdue is going to. Which you know, I'm from, I'm from Lafayette, Indiana, and I have a lot of friends from Purdue, and that's that's a horrible thing. But listen, I really do believe if we if we stay healthy, 
this team's going to make the tournament. They're going to win games just like they did in the first three games of the Big Ten season. And if we don't lose people, we're not going to lose the games. I think we're going to finish around right at 500 in the conference, which puts us in the tournament. Agreed. Let's let's grab a couple comments quick here. Can, um, can I say um, one more thing real quick? Just real quick. Um, I think the issue that with this team that where I disagree with you, Rajiv, on that is simply this. I think that this was a team that did not have the growth potential that a lot of the teams in the conference have because we didn't have the talent. We didn't have the young talent, especially, that you expect to get better as the season progresses and it starts to carry you later in the season. And right now, what's happening is Wisconsin started out high on the list of, of the teams. We were ahead of the curve of everybody else, and everyone else caught up and is starting to pass us now. Yeah. So here was something we, we asked, will he be the coach in five years? Murph says no. Um, Murph <laughs> also has a second comment saying no. <laughs> uh, Brian Fuchs says no. Murph has a third one, no. <laughs> Comment on Pink says no. Joe Jensen says yes. Chip says I don't think so. P says 50-50. Badger Man agrees with uh, Ryan and Rajiv. Uh, Ryan, breaking to breaking breaking against me here. My fellow Ryan says hopefully not. Uh, Bo Dragon says he won't be a coach in five months. <laughs> uh, Bo Dragon, come Bo Dragon, on. Are we, are we sure he's not making <laughs> Or Bo Dragon says five minutes. So he's going on there. There is a question here that I, I want to kick to both of you from a, on Appreciative Ryan. Again, a part of the Ryan army that supports this show. Uh, Scott and Rajiv, is there anything Gar can do to win you over, or are you completely done? I think I kind of alluded to that already, and that is cashing in on the uh, 24 class next year. And that means like getting Khan and Freitag um, or, you know, Nick and Khan, right? Like you've got to get two of those guys. You have to. Um, I'd be happy with one of them, actually, to be honest with you at this point, considering our track record. And then making a sweet 16 next year. Like he's, listen, it's been six years. Do you know how many times under guard we've won two games in the Big Ten tournament? How many times? Once. Once. I was going to say twice, but once, okay. One time. The tournament has not been – the tournaments in general, they haven't, they haven't treated us well. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Scott. I just for everyone, that up there. for everyone looking on the podcast, Justin just cackling out of nowhere makes no sense. Um, there are right. comments on YouTube that we're reacting to, so I apologize for that. Yeah, Bo Dragon. How about Jamel Howard? <laughs> yes, yes. We do talk football a lot. All right, guys. Let's wrap that up there. We're at an hour or two. Um, appreciate the quad pod for jumping in. For everybody listening, we still got 183 uh, crazy psycho fans like us. I, I mean that in a complimentary sense. Let's by go. the way, listening. Let's go. Here's the other thing. Just I want to finish on this because I. This is something, Scott, you mentioned, and I think this is a great point. Um, it's one of the reasons I love having you on the show is you have a very nuanced way of, of talking about this. You mentioned you started off by saying, I hope he is here because it means he had success, mm -hmm. right? I thought that was a great way to state it because at the end of the day, we're all Badger fans, and we lose sight of that occasionally. But we really all have the same big goal, and that is a successful yeah. program to cheer for. So, um, if you know, I think sometimes we get a little – too angry with each other, I guess is what I'm saying. Maybe I'm being um, in a living in a, in a unrealistic world here, but I thought that was a really good way to put it, Scott. Thank you. You were just passionate. We all want them to be good. Some of us are really pissed off because we don't think that we're as good as we should be and don't like the direction. And some of us think feel differently. And that's why we're here talking about it. Commandant says we need a beer or two after all this guard talk. <laughs> I agree. I'm already two in, and I'll probably get another one after this. All right, y'all. We are actually going to wrap it up this time. It's my third time saying it, but appreciate everybody tuning in, everybody cheering on. Uh, Bo Dragon, appreciate you too, man, as always. Um, we'll get you on the show at some point. Gold Digger, even though you said Scott's the only one on here with realistic views, we still love you, man. Um, on Wisconsin, we got, more talk. we got Jason Jordan interview coming up where we talk about Con Knipple, we talk about Kai Rogers, we talk about um, Badgers recruiting, great guard recruiting. So that's coming up probably tomorrow or Monday. And we got a couple of guests that you, I'm not going to tease it because they're not confirmed, but y'all really like that as well. So on Wisconsin, appreciate everybody here. Appreciate everybody in the chat. Um, let's go.